can we finally say that we we did feel pressure? <laughs> because we've been saying that we didn't, but no. No, uh, you know, we... Um, you know, we were all thrilled by the success of Frozen just because, because it, it's a little hard for everybody to understand, but we all kind of work on each other's films. Chris actually uh, storyboarded on Frozen and did the voice of Oaken. And, uh, and we all, you know, contribute, just like Chris and Jen, the directors of that movie, contributed on this movie, giving us notes and stuff like that. So it, it, we all have ownership over everybody's films. It is such a team at Disney Animation right now. It's an amazing team that works together on every project. So it's, I, I looked at it as just an inspiration. We're coming down here to 50 and then over here to one. Okay. Congratulations. Hey, Bill. Hey. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Congratulations on a sweep and you're on a roll. Thank you. Um, tell everybody, though, the challenge for you of doing a, the first superhero Marvel movie at Disney and this heartfelt story about grief between a boy and this huggable robot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the challenge, right? Um, so, uh, you know, the, our biggest challenge was always, it's always story. Whenever you're making any kind of, you know, uh, film, it, the story is really the, the ultimate thing that you're trying to tackle. And, and for this one, we had this amazing story about grief, about loss, about a 14-year-old who loses his brother and a robot who becomes his, essentially his healer. Uh, and trying to reconcile that with a superhero origin story uh, was very difficult, and it took the bulk of our time uh, as directors. I mean, we, we worked at it, and we worked at it, and we worked at it until we finally found that Baymax himself, as the, the character Baymax, was the link that linked those two stories together. But uh, in our 20-year history uh, at Disney, I think this was our most challenging film, but, you know, I, it makes it all the sweeter when this kind of stuff happens. Yeah, we, we've all been at Disney, each of us, for about 20 years, and every movie is hard, and, but they're hard in their own way, and I think you're getting to the heart of what was uniquely difficult about this one, which was taking all these disparate elements and bringing them together. And there are two distinct genres we were taking on, a superhero origin story and a boy and his dog or a boy and his robot story, and we had to tell one without, without making it at the expense of the other. So yeah, I think that, that really was the most challenging thing, is, is pulling, pulling all these elements together. But the key issue was that we always knew that the heart of the story was that story about the boy who loses his brother and then is redeemed and, and, and actually saved by this incredible robot Baymax. So that was always the heart. We're coming down here to one and then we'll go to 12. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We have a fan question from Paul Bachman who's asked, who was your biggest influence growing up? Oh, oh wow. Walt Disney. Okay. Yeah, I know that's a boring answer. That's completely an unoriginal answer, but uh, yeah, it was Walt Disney. Uh, okay, I'll be sort of boring and say Walt Disney and Charles Schultz. Uh, those were the, the Disney movies and, and the Peanuts comic were the things that made me want to draw and write and tell stories and I think led me on a, a path that actually takes me here today in this moment. Uh, they, they compelled me here, so uh, th those, those are my biggest influences. And I'm gonna be totally contrarian. A Mickey Mantle. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're coming down to well 12, done. and then we'll, well end done. it with 25. Uh, Lopakis of Sandoval, I am Trudam News. I'm here. Where are you? Hi. Oh, On oh, your right. right here. <laughs> no worries. Uh, if you guys can finish this sentence, yeah. what I love about being a storyteller is... Mm. Uh, the, the ability to uh, move people emotionally. I, I, for me, it's what I love about being a storyteller and working at Disney Animation Studios is working with amazing people like Don, like Roy, amazing creative collaborators. We have an incredible community, and I think that's our strength, is our collaboration. So that's what it is for me. And I would say making a better world. I think stories are change the world. And I know for me, one of the first things I remember was a re-release of Pinocchio. It changed my life. It made me a better boy and I hopefully made me a better man, so. And we will it's end working, it with 25. Progress. 25. How's it going, uh, Orti, Ireland? I met you guys at the Irish Premier. That's right, so, yeah. hey, man. Thank you so much for coming to Ireland for that. We really oh, that was awesome. It. Ireland rocks. If you haven't <laughs> been to Ireland, you should totally go. <laughs> uh, in terms of, obviously, the last few days, we uh, sat down with Cartoon Saloon Tom Moore yesterday, and we had yep. a chat uh, just about Oscar week and how collaborative it is, because we were trying to get it out of him that you guys were in competition, all this sort of stuff. Yeah. But he said the last few days are just a massive, I guess, mesh of ideas and a mesh of uh, the animation community coming together. So talk a bit just about the last few days. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's, uh, you know, uh, some of these people we've known for a long time, like Dean Dubois, uh, you know, we've probably known for about 20 years, something yeah. like that. 
uh, and Tom we just met, you know, during the, this whole press tour, but we've become fast friends, and same with the, the box troll guys, Tony and Graham, and uh, it, we're a relatively small community in animation, and, but we love each other's stuff so much, and, uh, and that's one of my most cherished things, uh, in addition to this, uh, about this, this whole experience is getting to know those guys and, and getting to become friends with them, and, and I think it's friendships that will last forever. Um, yeah, it was, um, I had a very strange mix of emotions getting up out of my seat and then walking down the aisle up to the stage uh, because, of course, I was really happy and really excited, uh, especially for our crew who sacrifice a lot to make these movies. It's hundreds of people contributing everything that they have to work on this one thing. So I was happy for them. But I also felt strangely bad for the other directors who we know very well, and they all made incredible movies, all worthy movies. And uh, so I felt a little bad for them. Uh, I love all the films that were nominated. I think this is one of those years where you can really honestly say it is an honor to be nominated. Uh, so, so yeah, we, we love those guys. Dean is one of my best friends, and, uh, and they're all really fantastic filmmakers. And I think the joy of this season has been getting to know all those guys. It's been a, a phenomenal trip, and you know, it, it is the best uh, aspect of this industry is that you, you, you don't have to compete, you're all in it together and those guys rock.